Dear 2024, I feel like everyone starts the year out with the words, be kind to me or be good to me, as if the year itself has control over their lives. I've been there, constantly thinking there was something bigger at play in the universe that affected my life. There's sometimes, but the vast majority of the time, our year is what we make of it. This year, though, this year sees me taking back my life, my journey, and my joy. I've never chosen a word of the year, but I did this year. Heal. There are so many things I need to heal from, so many things I want to heal from. I've lost parts of myself along the way, bits and pieces chipped away from myself in childhood, as a kid in school, through supposed friends, through motherhood. I wear so many proverbial hats now that I often don't know who I am. Those parts of myself that chipped away were lost, but they aren't gone forever. I know I can get them back, and my process for healing this year will set me on a path to wholeness. I want to find myself again, figure out who I truly am underneath all of the labels I have given to myself or that have been given to me. When I look back on 2023, I remember the flourishing garden that died due to my depression. I battled with so many different parts of myself that it was hard to keep track. Depression kept me down, anxiety kept me overwhelmed, and ADHD kept me on the edge of anything I wanted to do. There were many new friends made, lifelong friends that I was sad to leave behind at the end of the year when we moved. When we moved to Florida, I said that I wasn't going to move again, and I was wrong. Even though I was an hour from the beach, even though I made some amazing friends, Florida wasn't the place for us. Toward the end of 2023, I had a breakdown. I realized that Florida wasn't the place for me. I wanted to love it there. I wanted to be done moving, but my heart wasn't in it. The heat was too much for me. The people were too much for me, and the political climate was too much for me. I was being called elsewhere. On December 17th, 2023, we packed what would fit into our two cars and a 5 by 10 utility trailer and set off on our newest adventure, moving to Maine. It's a place we had never been, but a place that is similar to Oregon, where we used to live, in many ways. The only thing different that mattered to us between Oregon and Maine was the cost of living. Oregon was just too far out of our price range to be manageable, and Maine was perfectly within budget. We drove through the day and night, stopping a few times to get some rest. We were tailing the freak storm that plowed up the east coast at the end of December, dealing with wind and rain the entire time. We saw some amazing things along the way, beautiful places we had never been before. Then there was Bucky's, and that was an experience in itself. My daughter was adamant the entire trip that she wanted to find a Bucky's because, as she put it, it's not a place, it's an experience. And, well, she wasn't wrong. Alright, 
so my kid made us stop at Bucky's because apparently it's an experience. <sighs> and it is an experience. This was uh, interesting. But I wanted to show you this fudge sampler that we got. The tiger one? Beyonce wants me to try the tiger one first. This one? Yeah. No, 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 not that one. Oh, this, this one. So this is salted caramel, this is tiger. So spicy. It's fucking delicious. <laughs> it's fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's really good. I did learn one very important thing through the entire drive from Florida to Maine. I will never, ever go visit New York City. The places we had to drive through were a nightmare. Confusing street signs, weird bridges, and astronomical toll prices that saw us paying $45 for one of our vehicles to go across the bridge because we were pulling a trailer. The skyline was pretty from far away, and that's about as close as I'll ever want to be to it again. Now that we're settling into our house, I'm ready to tackle 2024. I don't think I want to tackle it so much as give it a gentle hug. I'm on my healing journey, and it isn't going to be easy. There will be a lot of tears, a lot of change, and a lot of growth, but it's necessary. Growth is that uncomfortable feeling you get when you're between stages in life, when the liminal space of time pulls you in while you're going through a transformation. It's like they say about caterpillars turning into butterflies. Change isn't an overnight process, and it involves a full breakdown of who you are to get to who you want to be. This year, I'm making several promises to myself. These are for me and me alone, because my happiness isn't dependent on the actions or words of others. This year, I will spend more time reading and less time scrolling. I'll be the first to admit that I often get trapped in the doom-scrolling cycle of social media. There's a never-ending supply of quick dopamine, funny, feel-good, or dramatic videos waiting right at my fingertips. It's not good for me, and even though I recognize when it starts to affect my mental health, I find it a struggle to pull away. So, I'm instead focusing on what I can add to my day instead of remove. If I add more books to read, that leaves less time for mindless scrolling through social media. I used to read all the time, books for fun and books for learning. Somewhere along the way, I stopped reading. Books became time consuming when I had other things that needed doing. Books weren't a priority. My self-care and joy wasn't a priority. And that changes this year. This year, I will spend more time outside. Although it's the middle of January right now and the weather is literally freezing, outside time will be a priority for me. There needs to be more natural connection in my life. I spend all day in my house behind a computer screen for work. I spend all day in my house behind a computer screen for my hobbies like YouTube. It's very easy for me to lose touch with the cycles of the seasons, even the cycles of the day or the moon phases, because of how little time I spend in communion with nature. I'm once again in a new place, too. I don't know this land. I don't know these spirits. I don't know this place. But I am not outside of nature. I am nature. This year, I will reconnect to my spiritual and religious practice. With 2023, and let's face it, every year since COVID, I have become almost fully disconnected from my spiritual life. I used to spend time pulling a tarot card every day. I used to meditate regularly. I used to pray regularly. I used to honor the moon faces, the Sabbaths, and my witchcraft. 
I want to get back to these practices this year. My spiritual path and religious beliefs are important to me. And even though they had to take a back seat when my everyday life needed more attention, they've always been there. This year, I will spend more time in the moment and less time wishing I did. I will practice mindfulness and be aware of my body. Grounding will be an integral part of this practice, making sure that I'm connected to reality as it is rather than living in my head. Anxiety, depression, and ADHD make mindfulness very difficult for me, but it's not impossible. I can do it. I just have to find a method that works for me. More moments, more memories. This year, I will create for the sake of creation. My passion for creating things, physical objects, and online content disappeared last year. It became a strain, a source of anxiety for me any time I thought about making a video or picking up some yarn to crochet. There's this thought that comes through that if I'm not doing something productive, then what I'm doing isn't worth doing. But creating for the sake of creation is productive. It brings joy, it's healing, it's happiness. I will worry less about what other people want from my creations and simply create because I want to. With all the changes I want to bring this year, I have to also remember that the point is joy. The point is healing. If something doesn't work, it's okay to abandon it. Plans change. People change and our needs change. We adapt and keep moving forward. So 2024, you don't have to be good to me. I'll be good to myself. <laughs>